Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Ephesus Ministries, where our senior pastor is Jeff E. Carter Jr., and our assistant pastor is Shannon L. Carter. I'm your announcer, Elder Anita Dooley, and we really appreciate you joining us for our worship service this morning. We hope that you enjoy and that God blesses you. For all of you who are watching us on live stream, please share and put your name and location so that we can pray for you and your family. There are four ways to give to our ministry. First of all, if you're using Tithely, give your tithes and offerings from your cell phone via text. Use the phone number 1-833-527-6311 and write the word give in the message. You will receive a text to set up your account. For PayPal, paypal.me forward slash Ephesus Ministries, New York or NY. If you would like to mail in your offering to the church, please mail to Ephesus Ministries, 80 Durham Avenue, Buffalo, New York, 14215. And for cash app, dollar sign, Ephesus Ministries, 80. Please join us every Wednesday night, seven o'clock for our dynamic Bible study. And then we are in prayer every night at 630. You can email us at EphesusInfo at gmail. Dot com. At this time, we will have our prayer from Sister Renee Hargrove and scripture from Sister Soraya Carter. Immediately following our scripture, you will hear from our music ministry. Following the music ministry, the next voice that you will hear will be that of our senior pastor, Jeff E. Carter Jr. God bless and enjoy our service. Good morning. Um, if you will bow your heads. Father God, we thank Thank you for this beautiful day, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. You are so awesome. You are awesome, God. We, we know we have not been the way we should have been. So could you forgive anything that we have not done that has been good in your sight? Could you please forgive us? Father, we have a lot of people who are hurting today. We have people who are grieving. Could you comfort those who are hurting and who have lost loved ones? Father, you know that this is a difficult time, but we, 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 we love you and we depend on you because without you, Lord, we are nothing, absolutely nothing. We know that it's all gonna work out for the good because you're working on it now. And we just give you all the praise and the glory for all of the mercy that you have given us. Father, we know that one day we will see you and we're gonna have to account for everything that we have done wrong, but we're gonna depend on your mercy, Lord. And thank you for your son who took away the sin for us. We didn't deserve it, but you gave it to us anyway. And we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Just wait. I know what is loud. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being con content. content in any and every situation. Whether well, well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or out in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Philippians 4, 4 12 and 13. And 13. Where my sake 
Well, praise God. I want to thank the praise team this morning for leading us in that great praise and, and worship. Glory to his name. That's why we're here today. And can we invite you uh, who are watching us on Zoom? Thank you for being here with us. We want to thank our guests that we have with us today. You're so welcome to be here with us and God bless you for joining us. Those of you who are joining us on Facebook, find an opportunity to be blessed by God today. Let me pause for a moment just to thank all of our production team. I won't take the time now to name them one by one, but I, I just want to thank them for the phenomenal job that they're doing. They make this look so easy, but there's a lot of work that goes into this. I was thankful for them this morning. I was watching uh, one of the news programs that comes on. I uh, can't remember whether it was Good Morning America, Meet the Press, whatever it was, and the uh, host sitting, I guess, in his big chair there in New York City, introduced one of their panelists all the way down in New Orleans. And when he introduced him, the panelists couldn't hear a thing he was saying. And he had to stop for a moment and say, excuse us for some technical difficulties. We'll get back to him. And I recognize in their multi-million dollar studios that even they have technical difficulties. And so we're so glad that God blesses us to come this way so technically this morning. We have a very great speaker today, um, but just before I introduce the speaker, let me sort of encourage you by saying we are going through some difficult times. The pandemic seems to be rising again. The conflict politically and civilly in our country just seems to be continuing. As a matter of fact, this week, um, I, 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 I heard some things that were so unbelievably hateful that it almost frightened me. And I recognize people are afraid people are angry. And it is unfortunate that somehow we cannot hear the word of God. But let me say it to you. One thing God said to his people was, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. So let me encourage you again, find your place in God and hold on. Our speaker today is uh, a young man that I have known for, uh, if I say over 50 years, it will sort of tell his age, but he was just a very, very young child when I first met him a little over 50 years ago. The chairman of our trustee board, not only the chairman of the trustee board at Ephesus Ministry, but one of, one of our church's greatest supporters, um, well known in the community, uh, trustee Kenneth Turner, is going to bring our message to us today. God bless Trustee Kenny Turner. Speak a great word for the Lord, son. Thank you so much, Pastor, and good morning, the church at Ephesus and all of our friends who are with us today. Let us bow our heads. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. If we can move right to the lesson text, and I let Latasha, if you could just bring up the scripture today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you brothers and sisters to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teachings you received from us. For you yourselves know that you ought to follow our example. We are not idle when we were with you nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, laboring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this not because we don't have the right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work 
shall not eat. We hear some among you are idle and disruptive. They are not busy. They are of busy bodies. Such people we command and urge God that we settle down and earn the food to eat. As for you, I'm sorry, I can't see the last line. The 16th verse says, Let's Trustee, just move on. Trustee, it says, and as for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate that. And if we can turn to the next slide. The title of this lesson is Be Not Weary in Well Doing. Thank you. The church at Thess Thessalonia was relatively new when Paul wrote this epistle. And like all churches that are new, there were some problems. There were some who believed in the imminent return of Christ. As a result, some had stopped working and became and their behavior became like busy bodies. Paul wrote the second epistle to correct the misunderstanding. His instructions to the fledging church were to withdraw from those who were being disorderly. And that withdrawal is never easy. Moreover, these faithful brethren may have been discouraged by those who were not working. Today, there are times that we are discouraged as well. Perhaps we're discouraged by circumstances of life. Maybe our jobs isn't working out the way that we think that they should. Perhaps our family relationships are in struggle. Perhaps we see some brethren not being faithful to the word of God, like those in Thessalonia. The temptation is to give up and quit doing what we need to do. But at these times, we must think of Paul's words of encouragement. And that is, be not weary in well-doing. Let us think of some of the reasons why we ought not be weary in well-doing. First is reward. We ought not be weary in well-doing because there's great reward in doing good. There is an intrinsic reward. That is, when we do good things, they are in and of themselves rewarding. Consider Paul's thoughts in 1 Corinthians 9 and 18. What is my reward then? Verily that I preach the gospel, that I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. Jesus said in John 13 and 17, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Consider the parable of the wise and the foolish man in Matthew, the seventh chapter, the 24th and 25th verses. Therefore, whosoever hears these things saying of mine 
and doeth them, I will liken them unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat down the house, but it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. There's also an eternal reward for being not weary in well-doing. Matthew 5 and 12, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Colossians, the third chapter, 24th verse, knowing thee that the Lord ye shall receive the reward of your inheritance, for ye serve Lord Christ. In Hebrews, the 11th chapter 6 verse, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. In Revelation, the 22nd chapter, the 12th verse states, and I be, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his works shall be. Galatians 6 and 9 states, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Why ought we not be weary in well-doing? Because it's a great need. Edmund Burke, a British statement, attributed as saying, all that is necessary for the forces of evil to win in this world is for enough good men not to do nothing. Paul wrote, for so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of the foolish men. That comes from 1 Peter, the second chapter, 15th verse. If we consider ourselves good folk, then let us do good. Jesus said, but love your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing again and your reward shall be great and ye shall be the children of the highest for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil that comes from luke the sixth chapter 35th verse Hebrews 13 and 16 says, but to go, do good and to communicate, forget not, for which such sacrifices God is well pleased. We must seek to overcome evil with good. Romans, the 12th chapter, 21st verse states, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. First Peter, the third chapter, eighth and ninth verse says, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one, of another, 
Love is brothering. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil. Or railing for railing. But contrarywise blessing knowing that ye are unto call, that ye should inherit a blessing. Let us not be weary in well-doing, because when we do good, we satisfy a great need. The third point I would like to make is when we're not weary in well-doing, and we do good things. We set good examples for others. Consider Dorcas, Tabitha, in Acts, the ninth chapter, 36 verse. Now there at Joppa, a certain woman, disciple named Tabitha, by which interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and arm seeds, which she did. Dorcas was a woman of good works, and she remains a great example for us today. Also consider the example of the woman who anointed Jesus at the house of Simon the leper. Jesus said, thou hast done what she could. She is come beforehand to anoint my body for burying. Verily I say unto you, whosoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also shall have done shall be spoken for a memorial for her. That comes from Mark, the 14th chapter, the eighth and the ninth verse. Her example lives for us today. First Timothy 5 and 25 speaks in this regard also. So also good works are conspicuous and even those that are not cannot remain hidden. In setting a good example, we bring glory to God. Matthew 5 and 16 states, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glory the Father, which in heaven. Consider Ephesians, the second chapter, the 10th verse. For we are workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto the good works which God has before ordained and that we shall walk in them. Psalms, the 86th chapter, 12th verse says, I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all of my heart. I will glorify thy name forevermore. First Corinthians, the sixth chapter, 20th verse, for ye are brought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Let us not be weary in well doing, for in doing good we set an example. In conclusion, we ought not be weary in well doing because. There's great reward in doing good. There's great need for us to do good. 
and that we set a good example and that we glorify God when we do good. Thank you for allowing me to have this space to bring this lesson to you today. Back to our pastor. Thank you, Trustee Turner. Thank you for such a great message. I, I love that. The, the message was all about doing good. And uh, I like the way you closed. You closed by saying, doing good gives glory to God. God bless everybody who's, who's uh, heard that great message today and have the assurance that God blesses you for doing good and doing what's right. Take a moment, if you will, and just bow your head and let's pray. God, we're thankful. We're thankful because you are God and you love us as much as we love you. We're thankful, God, for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for us and who gives us the assurance, God, that we have an entree to you, our heavenly father. And so now, God, our lives are in your hands. We pray today, God, that if there is anyone listening now who, who wants to take this word and hide it in their hearts and enter into relationship with you, that you give them the assurance now that they can know you not only in the pardon of their sins, God, but that, that they can know you in an everyday relationship. We praise you for this. We give you glory for it. And now, God, this week, we don't know what might come, but we know that you are in charge. Bless us according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless. Let me first of all commend Ephesus for hanging in there with us. Thank those of you who are in prayer every night. We pray seven nights a week. Prayer works. If you have not yet joined us for prayer, join us. As a matter of fact, I, I put on Facebook this week uh, the way things are going. If you don't know how to pray, either learn real quickly or get hooked up with someone who knows how to pray. Uh, if we fail to keep the connection to God, we are in serious trouble. But I think we're not because there are some of us praying. God bless Ephesus, those of you on Zoom, we'll see you tonight at 6.30 for prayer. Facebook Live, join us Wednesday night at 6.30 for prayer and immediately after prayer at seven o'clock we we'll go into Bible study. You won't want to miss joining us as we study the word of God together. God bless. Thank you for being here today. And God's peace be with you in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.